So good evening everybody, as I said, my name is Tom Andy Scott. So we're looking at core production um, and it was great actually to see Dave's kind of stuff because it's nice to give you the sort of um, embedding of the actual principles we've been using as well, as you said. So our community acquired 1.2 million. A um, bit of background information on you, our project is called Anisable Vision and it's about reimagining Anisable as a green, sustainable and tourist attraction. Okay, it's a small village five miles north of Pontypridd. Um, it acts as a southern gateway to the Darwano forestry. Um, it's one of the biggest forestries in Wales. Um, and it, like Dave said about Cairoli, it was a previously mining community and suffers from the effect of the industrialisation. They were very limited in services they received despite high pockets of deprivation. It wasn't the community's first area, so they didn't have any of the um, support from that aspect. Uh, partners in Glencoch Community Regeneration secured a community voice worker. Their role then was actually go in and embed sort of the asset-based principles, the core production principles, and really were collaborative practices with the community. Um, didn't come out with this, come out with this challenges because obviously you're tackling a massive dependency culture. Um, we held a Shape My Town event. Um, that analysed the possibilities of Anisable um, and how it could be more sustainable. Um, from that, YRP, which is the company I'm currently working for, Anisable Regeneration Partnership, successfully gained £20,000. Um, this was to develop the vision and the bid um, and also to train community leaders or to nurture community leaders, if you'd rather, the way we've done it. Um, in asset-based principles. They actually went out there and they were catalysts for engaging within our communities. So developing a vision, ABCD, practical skills, capacity and knowledge of local residents, our local community leaders we like to call them, picking on their passions and interests of local residents. So those who knew the roots and trails of the forestry, those who were already active and engaging in mountain biking, um, walking, climbing, all the outdoor activities stuff up there. Um, the effectiveness of these local communities and the groups and the voluntary organisations already there. Um, resources of public, so it's happening. I know you said that most of the communities look at the council as if it's just one and they've got a figure of everything, but we're tapping into the local. Um, so again, so the local um, sports officer was tapping into the local mountain biker from NRW, that kind of thing. Um, and the physical and e economic resource of a place that enhance their well-being and for us it's majorly centred about the routes and trails around Anisable. Um, using the appreciative acquiry approach, how we went and done it, we utilised our community leaders to go out using the community um, appreciative inquiry approach. Simple, what is great about Anisable? Making people feel good about the environment and how do we make it better? How do we build on what we have already here? Okay, so what they told us, um, our consultation process is probably over a space of 18 months. I know we've got a year over there, but we like to dumb things down. Typically happens within our sectors. Okay, community planning, valley vision, shape my town, storytelling, advisory group meetings, butchers pool, uh, pony club groups, local primary school. Um, overall, we engaged with 400 people. I think it was more than that in the end. Uh, but when we were writing the bid, that was the number that we could actually pin down as official, you know, it's like. Um, what they said, it was a fantastic community spirit, needs a centre, especially for services with young people. Um, the pool there is a little paddling pool, it's leaking, they want to keep it open, extremely costly for the local council, so they want to shut it down, they've been challenging that. Um, but they like the idea of a splash pad. Improved routes and trails in the forestry with good signage, linking to businesses. Great asset in the centre of the forest, Darwano is the activity centre there. Um, love to drop in for a coffee, maybe a visitor centre, good information point for tourists outside the area as well. History and biodiversity, so we've got lots of history, heritage, biodiversity, different things. The story of Gitto Neath Bran, um, who's from the village, who ran, beat a horse in a race over to Merthyr, that kind of thing. Our next step was collating, analysing and writing the bid from all this information. Again, we were quite lucky within Anisipal that we did have people with lots of experience and knowledge. We had Barbara, Barbara Castle, who's worked a lot so all over the places, um, and she's got an OBE for her um, community development practices. Um, and again, just tapping into the community strengths for it. So when we were doing it, um, we totally remapped our structure. We'd gone from the bottom up, essentially, or the from the the bottom down or whatever way you want to look at it. So at the top, the key most important partners for us are all the local groups. So you've got your festival group, your friends, the butcher's pool. They then feed into 
lots of little subgroups. We had a trails and pathways meeting last night, which comes in beer, okay, which then feeds in all the members are from our vision group, which feeds in here. So it's literally working from the ground up. Um, just to give you a little bit more info about the bid, what we did, again, tapping into assets, we utilised video to bring the bid to life. Just going to click on it. So as you can see there, we use local people. Um, we bought a GoPro and we said to the local people, go out and show everything. You know, show what's great about Unspo, show what activities, show everything we got out there and we'll work around that hopefully when writing the bid. It also brought the bid to life as well. Um, so yeah, it did, it was a little bit difficult because we did have like 30 hours of footage that we had to dump down into like a two minute video. So it was a bit difficult, however, um, worth doing because it really brought the bid to life with regards to making it a reality. Oh, give me a sec. Okay, so we even, um, once we had our vision, we even sent it out to local community members and we chose the best, the best role in which we thought highlighted um, our, su our success and what it's about. So it included £300,000 to develop the community hub for young people, um, £200,000 to improve the facilities up in the visitor centre up there, um, 65,000 for signage and heritage information, 100,000 pound to replace replace or repair or replace with a splash pad within Butcher's Pool and 17,000 pound then to improve the routes which link all these and make um, the businesses more viable. Some successes, just summed that all up for you the first one just for there with where the money's going. Um, Community members have been empowered to influence change and challenge the status quo. That's been massive. Volunteers have created a local quarterly newspaper, the Clitter Scream, free to residents and delivered by all volunteers. Really interesting because they don't actually like the term volunteer. Nobody wants to volunteer, they do it out the good of their heart. Um, and then also ability to attract other groups, tourists and funders. Our key challenges though. Um, currently, we, our key challenge is to ensure there isn't a reliance on staff now that we have staff in place. So it's almost going back to the, we're not community development officers, we're facilitators. We don't do it for people, we do it with people. There's been a major displacement of power in certain areas, particularly with, we've got a community council um, and it's been very, very difficult. It is a change management process for the whole community and it is proving extremely difficult. Um, people have forgotten how they've been consulted if we're talking about crop production. Our fault essentially, because what we haven't done is we haven't shouted about the success, we haven't shouted about it, we haven't said, this is what you asked for, this is what you've done. We had a lady come to us, she said, well, you didn't consult me. And then we pulled up a video where she was talking about she wanted a splash bath. <laughs> but that's our fault. We, didn't, we haven't actually gone out of the way and said, you know, promoted the good work and kept them empowered in a sense. Um, slow progress on capital work due to major feasibility work. So all the feasibility stuff, again, is shouting about it and saying about it. Future, tackling ne negative possessions on in-term volunteering, like we said. Mm -hmm. Services for children and young people. They say about it, but nobody actually wants to do anything about it. They want it done for them. Tackling that dependency culture again. And this is the key one for us. Success attracts success. 
and we're really trying to avoid growing into an organization where we can have loads of staff because that's what we're finding now success attracts success and we can bring in staff but is that what the community want is that what the community need so essentially we want to envision the long-term sustainability of it um, and these are some of our aims then of hopefully how we're going to do that so just some pictures for you thank you very much feel free to tweet us at Anisable Vision. Don't know why we're on Facebook because half our community isn't on, um, on Twitter because half our community isn't on there. However, it's about sharing success on a wider basis as well.